That worship was awesome. Um, like Mario said, my name is Jim Tuthill. Uh, me and my wife, Glenda, we worship at, uh, and serve at a community in Sonoya. And we 
are also blessed to do be part of a grow group right here at Generation that we had at our house with Mario, Deborah, and several others in here. So um, we're going to start off with a prayer, and then we'll we'll go ahead and get into it. So please pray with me, dear Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, please be with everyone here and keep their their hearts and their minds open to hear your word, Lord. Um, whatever I can 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 say to to reach somebody, if we reach one person, that'd be amazing. Lord, thank you for uh, the gift of your son, and be with us all today and going forward. Amen. Um, I grew up in a, a little town in Michigan, Detroit, and a little suburb of Madison Heights, so uh, um, <clears throat> there's no church for me when I grew up. I mean, there was churches in Detroit, but uh, my family, we didn't go to church. So um, my dad, mostly, uh, he he grew up, He his family, he grew up in a, a tough situation. He didn't play no sports, no, nothing like that, so he pushed me that direction. So when it was football, basketball, soccer, hockey, I played it all. That was my life. And it, it kind of instilled me to love sports and, and love being part of teams and accomplishing things and put competitiveness in my life. But still, there was no God. Um, I definitely was missing that. Um, so that's how my life went as a kid, just just sports and, and, and a family. I moved to uh, Florida right before high school. And uh, uh, same thing. Uh, I played uh, basketball and baseball. I was a really good basketball player, but I, I preferred basketball. I was just that was my sport. I, I was good enough to make the varsity team, but that was about it. But uh, <laughs> baseball, it was my thing. I just didn't. I just loved basketball. Um. So I guess it was my junior year. Uh, my mom started going to church, and my mom and sister would go to church, and. Uh, me and my dad would stay home, you know, just do whatever, watch, get ready to watch football or, or whatever else, you know. So um, this was right after we moved to Florida. Um, so my mom came one day and said, hey, the church has a softball team, and they, they need some players. So, of course, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I can, I, I'll, go, I'll go in and play softball. So I went in and played softball, and then uh, they had a basketball team, a basketball team. So I stayed in church, but it was – very for the wrong reasons. I wasn't there growing close to God. I wasn't there for the right reasons. And, and if I said I was, I was a hypocrite because I was just there to have fun, play sports. Okay. So then uh, my senior year, my parents got a divorce. Um, my dad had an affair with my mom. So that's what it was. Um, they split up. My dad moved away. Uh, it was me and my sister. Um, I was starting my freshman year in college at a community college in Ocala, and she was in high school. So my mom stayed for one more year till my sister finished high school, and then she moved away as well. So it was just me and my sister got kind of thrown out into the world, whether we liked it or not, at a you know a fairly young age. My sister immediately after high school, and and me were like. Pretty much the same. Um, so I got a job at Foot Locker. Uh, and like I said, I was very competitive. So even even in my job, I was competitive. I wanted to sell the most Michael Jordan shoes. I wanted to sell the most, you know, have the most sales, have the best store, the, the lowest inventory shrinkage. You know, I wanted it all. I was very competitive. I wanted to, to be the best. So I was very successful at Foot Locker. I became a manager trainer, trained people to run stores. You know, moved moved around the country, did doing that. Uh, that brought me to Georgia. Uh, one of their bigger volume stores was in a uh, a mall called Greenbrier Mall. If anybody knows that, I know Mario does, Daryl does. Uh, but anyway, so um, I was doing that for a long time. Still, no God in my life. And uh, you know, when I was in high school and even at Foot Locker, you know, a lot of drinking, just hanging out with friends. I mean, I. Uh, you know, I wasn't a drug addict or nothing like that, but I was, you know, I wasn't doing, I wasn't going down the path God wants me to go down. You know, I was doing worldly things, what people of the world do my age. I mean, 
not all people, but you know. So, uh, uh, Foot Locker, I wanted to be a district manager. They, they liked me where I was. So I went out and opened my own business. Uh, c totally different thing, putting uh, utilities in the ground. Um, very uh, different from what I was doing. But then again, that, that, that sports, that competitiveness came out in me, and I, I thrived to, to be the best at directional driller I could. You know, the more pipe you put in the ground as well, the more money you'd make as well, so it worked out good both ways. You work hard, you make more money, you know what I mean? So that, that, that was good as well. So I heard there was an open basketball night at this church called Community Bible. This was, uh, I don't know, it was probably 22 years ago or something like that. It was early 2000s. And uh, they had an open gym. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go up for that. You know, and I, uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you all. I mean, I, me and my buddy, we, we did a shot and... You know, a shot of it. I mean, I wasn't an alcoholic now. I'm not saying that, but I liked to party. You know what I mean? So I, we we did that, and we went up to uh, to the uh, open gym basketball night, and I'm in there doing my thing, and you know, I, I knocked this guy down on the ground, and I wasn't, you know, that just happens when you play basketball. I picked him up, and he says, he says, hey, hey, what's your name, Jim? And I'm like, what's your name? He's, my name's Bo. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, he's like, I'm the pastor here. I'm like, oh, oh sorry. I mean, I was. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably reeking of alcohol, maybe or nothing. But I, I mean, I, I was, I was beating on Bo a little bit. I knocked him down probably twice before he asked my name. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, um, that's how I met Pastor Bo. And he goes, "Well, I'm the pastor here, and um, you know, we have church here too. You know, that's in the other." So he invited me, and I, and I went. And that was, uh, that's how I got connected to that church there. And then, like Mario said, almost immediately after getting there, um, I connected with a, a couple guys and Mario. We went to Promise Keepers, and uh, I met Mario almost immediately going that, going to community. And I believe y'all were pretty new to community as well when we went there. Yeah, so um, so started church. Then um, going back to my business, uh, I was arrogant. I thought. You know, I was a superstar, and I'd been had a business for about two years. Thought I knew everything. You know, I was young and just thought I had it all going on. I knew it all. So, oh, you got a job in Buckhead? Yeah, I'll take that job. Everyone's like, oh, oh, oh you going to Buckhead? Yeah, it was like no big deal to me. I'll take that job. So, uh, big job going right down through Buckhead. Um, what we do is, you don't know what directional drilling is. We dig a hole and drill goes in. It tunnels under goes under a road or 500 feet and comes up and then you pull back a utility this was fiber optics you can use it for gas or or whatever so uh uh my dad was working with me at the time and i had another guy working with me as well they were running the equipment at that time and i went to dig a hole so i dug a hole over over on the uh, corner I, it was right by lennox right by lennox dug a hole and i hit this black pipe and there's water dribbling out of the pipe. So the inspector comes over, and the inspector says, Jim, go ahead and cut that pipe and put it back together. It looked like a drain line. I mean, it was leaking water. So got the hacksaw out and cut the pipe. Cut the pipe. Boom! Explosion. It, uh, I, don't, I didn't know what happened. It blew me out of the hole. From here to Daryl is how far I went out of the hole. Uh, and I was, lay I was laying on the ground, and I heard it sounded like a bomb went off. All the car alarms were going off. Building alarms were going off. And uh, my face was hot. I really still didn't know what happened. I looked at Ed, the guy down there that was standing. My, I was like, what does my face look like? And he's like, you're, you're okay. You're burnt. I'd cut into a 22,000-volt power line with a hacksaw. So it blew me off it. I had no eyebrows. My face was sunburned, and my hair was gone. Power company got out there, and the guy said, where's the guy? He said, he's over there by the tree. He walked up to me, and he said, this guy from Georgia Power, and he said, I'm going to shake your hand. He goes, because I do not know how you are alive. He said, the line you cut into is a 22,000-volt power line, 
and he said nobody has had an encounter with a 22,000 volt power line and lived to tell about it. It is the most line that grabs you more than any other line. And I, to this day, I'm the only one that's ever encountered one and not died from it. So that, that alone just like, wow, you know, wow, that's, that's, I'm thinking, thank you, God, you know, thank you very much. I, I, wow. So that went on. That was, uh, that's, that, uh, been in business a couple of years. So finished that job up. We went to, uh, Dalton, Georgia. I came home to take my son to, uh, I foot a, a, uh, hockey game it's when the thrashers were here and uh came home it was a week night game you know the game didn't get over 11 or 12 we went back to the house got up six in the morning to drive back to dalton i was in an f-350 truck excuse me set my cruise control on about 78 because that's what i like to set it i just where you won't get a ticket and you know where you're going north out in 75 and 675 is about to split. There's a big ravine. Well, I fell asleep at the wheel. My truck came off the thing, off the ravine. I'm talking 12 foot. And it went into the woods. I didn't know all this. The only reason I do is because I seen it when they, when they, they took me away. But uh, I woke up after it knocked me out, of course. I fell asleep. I, when I woke up or came conscious, it was like waking up in the morning, except for I heard traffic. And I looked around, and there was nothing but blood and glass. And then I hear some guys in the woods. They came back in the woods, and I remember this like it was yesterday. He's alive! He's alive! Hurry! Somebody get him! He's alive! If you looked at my truck, you would say, how is he alive? There's no reason that he could survive that. How's he alive? You see, I'm alive because God had a plan for my life more than just what I was doing. More than working, making money, partying. He had something else in store for me. So, get through that. They stitched my nose back together, head and wrist. Other than that, I was not, I, I walked out of the hospital the same day. I mean, it was, it was amazing. So that goes by. And I'm still, like I said, I'm going to church, but I still feel like a little bit of a hypocrite. And um, even with this stuff going on, I feel like I'm not just where I need to be. Um, I need to be more a godly man because I'm still just not being walking the walk, you know, if that makes sense. So that's on my mind. So then I get sick. This all happened within a year. So then I get sick. I go to get checked out. I'm sick. I go to give blood. When I give blood, I pass out on the floor. So they find out that now my blood work's showing I have cancer. So I get diagnosed with stage one cancer, and luckily I have a cancer that radiation doesn't like. So so I would uh, still had to work. I just lost one of my employees, the main guy. It was just me and my dad. My dad would take me to Piedmont in the morning for my radiation treatments, and this went on for two months. I'd have radiation. I still have a little dot, 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 dot. So they'd take the machine and put it down on you. I got little tattoos, little tiny little dots, so they'd know where to align it. But what would happen? I was thinking, the first time it happened, I had the radio. I'm like, oh, that, that, I, I barely felt that. That, that was, that was nothing. Two hours later, I started throwing up, and it would go on for three hours. So I would drink Sprite or water, and this went out for two months. So I have a respect for anybody that goes through chemo or radiation, but then again, God spared me. I'm here to tell the story, amen? I mean, I'm here to tell what happened to me. A lot of people don't have that luxury. They go through that horrific radiation, and they, don't make, they still don't, don't make it. But anyways, so why is all this happening to me?
So I believe God's telling me that he's got a different plan for my life other than what I'm doing. And it's him kind of slapping me around or scolding me. It's what I believe. It changed me at that time after that year of going through all that stuff. It made me appreciate, like Mario was saying with his grandmother, you know, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You don't know that you're not going to walk out of here and and get in a car crash and you're not going to make it. Bob and his wife came all the way from Norcross. They don't know. They, they, they got a long drive back. The most dangerous thing you do every day is get in the car and drive. You don't know. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. I think what I was doing is being the type of Christian that would you know play the role Sunday and I wasn't a bad guy but you know I wasn't living living the the life walking the walk and I think he 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 molded me into that yeah Luke 9:23 says whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. It says daily. It doesn't say on Sunday. It doesn't say on Sunday and Wednesday. It says daily. So, pretty sure he meant daily. So, yep. So, uh, I did skip a little something. I'm probably just going to throw it in there so you can kind of we get to this next part. Um, I did get married when I was going to college and had my son, and uh, we were we were not godly and probably shouldn't have got married and got a divorce. Uh, we were young, and anyways. So I was divorced, but I did have a kid through all this as well. Um, and I did get remarried through the middle of all that. So what I'm getting at is um, this next thing. I, I I was remarried, and we went to a uh, men's and women weekend. Uh, and y'all, most some of y'all have been through here through it as well went to a men's and women meeting well i think some people thought it might fix us we had a lot of issues going on mario and deborah my goodness they were they went through a lot of it with us i remember uh mario talking about being there for your your accountability park at, at two or three in the morning i remember she left me at gold's gym one one night and it was 12 30 night one in the morning i called mario and He's got to be at Delta at 4 in the morning. He came and picked me up and took me home to Locust Grove and then back to... And what, what kind of friend is that? I mean, that that's a friend there. So, this marriage was really bad. And if anybody knew me then, Daryl knew me then as well, and Chris as well. They both went through that with me as well. I was not happy in my marriage, but like I said, the reason I brought up the other one, I already had a failed marriage. And now I was a Christian man, and I knew God did not like divorce. So I was going to do whatever it took to make sure this horrific marriage, you know, would, would, would work. I would stick in there and stick in there. Well, she helped me out with that. She, uh, she decided she liked to hang out with other men. We'll just say that. So... I went to Mario and some other Christian men I know and asked them, you know, what does that mean for me? Can I leave? And they were, yeah. So I went to the pastor, too, and I talked to pastors at my church, and can I leave? And they are like, yeah, you can, okay. So, you know, I did. I wanted to do it right. I'm not proud that I'm on my third marriage, which should, should be my first, but I am. And I can't change that or nothing like that. You know, you can't change your past. So when you make mistakes you got to live with the aftermath of them. So um, so I got the divorce. And uh, I ain't going to lie, I was pretty happy. 
and it, I'm just I was not gonna lie, I was pretty happy. I it didn't take me long to find myself. Uh, and to be quite honest, this is when I was really tried as a Christian man. I moved out on my own in a big house in Locust Grove. I had all the free time in the world I wanted. I could have went to any bar. I could have done whatever I wanted. Nobody would have known. Mario might have, nobody else would have probably known, you know. <laughs> but uh, I could have done what I wanted, but I didn't. I mean, I, I, did, I did what I wanted, but I did things that I thought would honor God. We had a lot of men's groups at my house. We had men's group Monday, uh, Wednesday night or Tuesday night. I was just pouring myself into being around godly men. Several of them in the room right right now. And that really shaped me to be a be a better, stronger Christian. The uh the men that I have uh that I have uh became close to. The Christian men. So So I wasn't really going to date much, you know, it wasn't la- really the last thing on my mind. I mean, really, I, 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 was, I was like, if it happens, it happens, you know, whatever, whatever. But I was really not gone. I was doing my thing. And uh, along comes the most amazing lady I've ever met. She's beautiful inside, beautiful outside. She was my dream girl. I mean, I was just like, it was like, when you know it, you know it. You know what I mean? It was like, and it wasn't just that she was pretty. It was, it was, uh, because there was a lot of pretty girls. A lot of people tried to set me up with pretty girls when I was single. I ain't going to lie. I mean, I was happy. I appreciate it. She's pretty, but you know, I really wasn't feeling it, you know? But Glenda was so comfortable and so honest and so sincere right off the part. I mean, between her and God, they saved me. You know what I mean? That that that's what just turned my life and made me a better person. Yeah. For sure. And uh recently uh you know, we 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 do things together. We have, we have some things we do some outreach together and serve together and and I still love to serve with the men's groups and things like that that with these guys in this room here. A lot of you guys are in the men's group in this room. I could call you out by name, but there's a whole bunch of you. Um, and I think what God does, my wife likes to go out to the pool. We have a little pool area, and she's got some roses out there. And the more she clips them and prunes them, the prettier they grow, the fuller they grow, the healthier they grow. And I kind of believe that's what God did to me. He cut me down. He pruned me until I was obedient to him. And then once I became obedient, it just, I mean, things are better. And still, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. Daryl's not guaranteed tomorrow. Glenda's not guaranteed tomorrow. Rebecca's not guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know. we got to live every day like it's our like it's our last. We got to honor God in everything we do. Everything we do. So, that's what I'm trying to do. I don't have it figured out at all. Every day is a learning process. I learn from you from the people in this room and my other, you know, other godly friends I know all the time. So, there's no reason I should really be alive today. If you would have seen the truck or heard the Georgia Power guy talk, there's no reason I should be alive today. So, every time God calls me, I'm going to answer his call. I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not some, you know, I, I can be a better man. I can be a better Christian. I can I can do better. And I want to find other ways to serve. But I tell you, if someone calls me, I, I or God calls me, I, I I answer the call. I really do. Um and as far as everybody else, if you're breathing in here right now, which you are because you're here, 
God's got a plan for you as well. God's got a plan for your life. And I'm sure you all have your own near-death experiences or things that made you and molded you into the the, you know, the great people that you are. And there's some great people in this room. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm looking around. This uh, you got an all-star team at this church, man. And, I mean, amazing. So if you are what you are, God's got a plan for your life too. So if you don't know what that is, just keep answering his call and just be there when he calls and you'll figure it out. So I'm still searching for my path. Things that you know more. There's there's more I can do besides. There's more. There's always more. You just got to be open minded and have your eyes open when it when it when it presents itself to you. Um, I've heard stories from a lot of different people. You know, do things for do you know do things for others. My wife's even done it. I, I'm like, are you serious? Like she'll she'll pick up a guy walking down the road and and you know this is a female now. I mean and give, give them gas and stuff like that. But that's what you do. I mean, that's what you do. Um, and I know y'all do that too. I, I know, I know y'all do that cause I, I've heard stories, but that's about, that's about all I have guys. And, um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pray. And, um, thanks for letting me share my testimony with y'all. And, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you very much, Lord. Thank you for for the gift of your son again lord thank you for everybody here um be with them help them find the way to serve you best for them lord plug us in use us lord just just lord let us come to you as empty vessels to be used as you wish lord lord we can all do better we can all do better Lord, thank you so much, so much for sparing my life when you did, Lord. Thank you for you giving me another chance to be a better man, better Christian, and a husband to a wonderful, wonderful lady. Lord, as we leave this day, keep us all safe, Lord. People that are traveling and driving home, keep them safe. Bless their, their families and bless their hearts, Lord. Jesus name amen.